Hi, and welcome back to the Rad High Rocks podcast. We are joined today by Dina Hogan. She is one half of Team Hogan with her husband, Tom. Um, a very impressive couple in the world of High Rocks, both Elite 15 athletes. And it's not just what they've achieved in this sport, but also prior to High Rocks, competing in world and European championships for Ireland in mountain running and triathlon. They now race and coach, and they bring their wealth of knowledge and experience to their clients. So we think this is going to be a super exciting episode, and we can't wait to chat. Thank you for joining us, Dina. Thank you. I didn't even have to pay you to say that. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm here all day. Yeah, thank you. You're, you're hired. <laughs> um all right well we wanted to before we get too into high rocks and everything you're doing at the moment kind of go back in time a little bit and find out for us and our listeners a little bit more about your experience and your past in um in endurance really isn't it yeah um yeah for sure so I think I started um quite late in life really con considering how much I've done in terms of volume and different sports um, I remember I was quite an active child and then you know you come away from it a little bit don't you and then I had a second uh, son Jay and Tom was doing a bit of running at the time and he said come on ahead to the club and you know that's quite daunting especially like just after having a baby and yeah. but um, mm. it was the best thing that ever happened and it really was the butterfly effect um, I, I'd say in my life because I met some amazing like-minded women um, and really I discovered oh actually I'm not as bad as I thought I was <laughs> and uh, it progressed from there really um, I started doing lots of um, club races realized okay let's go on a little bit further and um, you know we got some national titles and things like that and uh, tried everything um, from 5k um, to later on um, 80k races uh, anything to do with <laughs> with with running um, I suppose majority was like road running and then I think I got into trail running then one time and um, there was actually, yeah, there was a local race going on. Well, local local for Ireland could be like 150k, just in case anyone. <laughs> in <laughs> Ireland. Yeah, it, it was still on the, on the country. So, um, and it was a, a tra trail race. I didn't really know much about it. And um, I said, oh, I think I'm going to go to this. It was a Wednesday night and I flew up and um, I didn't realize, but it was a trial race to make the Irish team for a European mountain race. And you had to come cool. in the top, top two. And I came through and um, I'd never met like any of the people or the managers or, and uh, Jerry was the manager at the time. And he goes, uh, great, you've made it. And I'm like, the finish? <laughs> <laughs> to what? Like, yeah, okay. And then he explained, and I was like, oh, I, I really didn't know. So, um, and then no that, yeah, that was how I got into mountain running then. And um, at the time, Tom wasn't into it, and he thought we were all mental. He used to see us, like, <laughs> running up the side of these mountains. And um, he he's a phenomenal road runner. And at the time, he was, like, a sub-30 10K, and he was a 222 marathon. And Jerry oh, wow. was like... Hey Dina, move over. <laughs> get get Tom over here. Um, so he's convinced Tom to 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 try out as well. And of course, it just went from there. And we were lucky enough to see some amazing parts of the world. Some some true some truly amazing places that are just so far off the grid that you would never even think. And um, because obviously they're they have to go where the the terrain is and what they're looking for. And mm. um, so we yeah we did that. And um, like anything, then the body starts to take a little bit of, um, you know, picking up injuries, picking up niggles. And someone said to me, why don't you get a bike and just do a bit of cross training? Because at the time I was probably hitting maybe 100, 120K a week running. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, that makes sense. And I'd always been pretty handy at swimming. So I don't know what happened. I ended up joining this triathlon club. Um, yeah, I don't not? know. <laughs> nothing is ever half measures with me. I'm so in or nothing. And um, yeah, quickly realised triathlon was also something I was quite handy at. Um, I, I've always ex tried to explain that I'm not an I'm not amazing at anything, but I'm quite good at a lot. And mm. sometimes when you put that with hard work, it's enough. 
um, and all of a sudden, yeah, I was off to Austria and Kitzbühel. I was off to Rimini in Italy and just do, doing these races, representing Ireland and uh, led on to doing Ironmans. And that was my background in endurance sport. There's some of the best years of my life. Like a lot of people say, oh, would you ever go back? And um, I think it was it's it's more of the memory of it. And um, the children were, you know, at that stage where you just want to bubble them. And um, like Tess was one, Piers was three, seven, and nine. And for about six years, we had a camper van, and we used to just over here. The kids finish school around the end of May, and they don't go back till September. So we used to. Oh, just, wow haul ass into a camper van with six bikes and buggies and <laughs> you name it and then uh, we used to just head over to the continent and then uh, just travel around chasing the sun and chasing races doing doing some triathlon whatever but, we could find and it I suppose maybe it's more of the memory of everything rather than the mm. actual triathlons I'm not sure but uh yeah very 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 nice part of my life oh that's so cool I know camper life is amazing anyway, isn't it? And then I can imagine like even it with is. the kids just being outside yeah. and they're exploring. How, I mean, how did you? Back... No, yeah, sorry. I was just to say, looking back now, it's all a bit mad. Like at the time, I remember people saying to me, how far? What? Like <laughs> the very, very first year, we didn't even have a camper van. And I had qualified for the Olympic distance uh, European. And Tom was doing the European mountain race and then I was going to do an Ironman and it was all in the space of about six weeks and we kind of was like okay wait now there's six of us we fly in we fly out we fly in we fly out it's just not going to work so we said let's just grab a caravan off of like I, we have done deal I don't know what you have and uh, we just bought this like collapsed like banking caravan <laughs> I hooked it up to the jeep and off we went and I, my, I remember my mom and Tom's mom like waving goodbye like, <laughs> will we see them again like Tess was in nappies she was having a bottle and we covered five and a half thousand kilometers in six weeks oh. traveling from race to race across Europe and um, but that was the that was the start of uh, our summers yeah turned out well <laughs> man that's yeah. an, I mean to ha, ha, I mean I can't even get my head around how you can look after kids and train for an Ironman let alone yeah. then go and compete like most people training for an Ironman that the time that it consumes to train for those three disciplines and for the yeah. for the duration as well to fit it yeah. all in like wow you know super what? mom I, and dad I do look back now and I do think wow because at the time we we didn't feel we were doing anything that was outstandish um but now I just think oh my god I mean Tom and I the last year, Tom and I did the Ironman. We did them one week apart. So we were, if in context, we were both peak training at the same time. Whereas mm. before that, you know, we might have staggered it a little bit so that, um, and we were, we were getting up at like three and a half, three in the morning and having 300k turbo bike sessions done before the kids were wake, wake up. We never went outside because we couldn't, because then that would involve, getting a childminder or some of this so we were doing all our long bikes we were doing 40k runs on treadmills no yeah yeah we did our entire really our entire training for every Ironman was all done the only thing we ever did was went to the pool twice a week mm. because you know we haven't got you didn't have an end, endless pool at home no just... not for me not for me begging constantly <laughs> but um no we haven't, we haven't got one so, yeah, it was a huge, huge dedication. But it all boils down to this, down to that saying of if you, if you want it, you'll do it. If you mm -hmm. want it, you'll make time for it. And um, I'm so glad we did because it, as I said, it's some phenomenal memories. And I think the children, maybe not at the time, you know, especially the older ones, uh, they're like, oh, summer again. Like, oh, I want to I wanna hang around town with my friends. Like yeah. What? yeah. <laughs> so that's eventually obviously your your family dynamic changes your kids get older they have their own lives um, but I think they do look back at some stage and think hey that was kind of cool you know <laughs> oh yeah incredible and what a like awesome example to set I mean I think we see it in High Rocks quite a lot anyway especially with like for example Lauren Reeks and her daughter and Meg Jacoby and her daughter it's just so nice to see the positive influences and the like parents Absolutely. leading by example 
monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. 100%. I mean, yeah. I think you've just set the tone for the whole podcast. I'm a bit like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Where do we go from here? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even got to High Rocks. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So, well, well, there you go. How, where did the crossover come? Um, to how did you hear about High Rocks first? I mean, you, you are one yeah. of the first competing am I right in that, that nice nice way of saying you're old as that you started years <laughs> ago <laughs> I think it's quite interesting seeing people that got in at the right at the beginning of the sport because it's like how did you hear about it it's it was quite hey, funny story actually I had never heard of it and um it like I said the family dynamic was changing the children were getting older and like I think it's I think it's funny looking now because when I talk to friends or anybody and they have kids that are small and they're like, oh, it's so hard to fit the training in. I'm like, oh, you haven't a clue what's coming because when they're small, they're still at the age where they, they, they don't need anything. They don't have their own time. Essentially you can work around like, you know, but when they get older and they start to have their lives, their sports, they don't want to miss their training. They don't want to miss their matches, rightly so. Your life changes because it becomes about them. If, you know, and um, we decided that it was just time to stop maybe being so competitive and racing for this and racing for that and racing because this sponsor said this race is good or etc. And we just wanted to do things for fun. And we made the decision there and then, okay, everything we do now is going to be about a new experience, a new country, a new adventure. Um, fast forward, I wake up Christmas morning and I have this present and it's a weekend away to Germany. And I'm like, oh, that's lovely. And he's like, oh, yeah, while we're there, there's this event that we're going to do and we can do it together because that was the whole thing. Because okay. obviously running and triathlon, even though Tom and I have trained constantly together for over 20 years, essentially you're racing separate. Yeah. And he said, oh, no, you actually we actually do it together. And I was like, oh, OK, what is it? And he's like, I don't know. He's like, what's involved? I don't know. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. And like, that was it. That was literally it. Um, and I never really thought to ask anything. We never adapted our training. We, nothing. And then we, <laughs> we rock up to, um, it was in Hanover. And we rock up to Hanover. And this, we're in this indoor play setting which is very unusual because everything we do is outside and you know mm -hmm. in the great outdoors there's some music going at that stage there was an in-house briefing and it's all in German and um, so we listened and then realized we don't know so I'm, and they kept pointing to different things and there was a warm-up area and there was this sled and we're like do you think we have to push this or and at the time I don't know if you know but high rocks originally was 225 meters for the sled push and pull oh, okay like beyond anything like the sled pull was just you could just see this tiny like sled at <laughs> yeah. 25 meters away <laughs> and um t I tried to push it I just could not I couldn't even like move an inch and then Tom was like, geez, I can barely move this, you know. So then we went and found someone and we were like, if we can't move the sled, what's do can we move on? Or and they were I can't even remember now what they said. I think they said something like, Yeah, you just you get a penalty or something. I, I to be honest, I really don't know. We'd never done a <laughs> war ball. We didn't even know what a war ball was. So it was hilarious. It was um, you know, like just Chuckle Brothers type of stuff. So Tom, at least you could it. run. <laughs> yeah, that was it. that was our saving grace that we could run. And, uh, but Tom did all the sled push because, as I said, I couldn't move oh, it. Even God. though now, it, looking back, it's just pro women's weight, which mm. you know for me now. But um, but I remember leaving the sled push and just be like do 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 because I'd had like a whole three or four minutes run. <laughs> took off and Tom all I could hear was Dana <laughs> he was Bambi leg he could barely oh, run it was bless hilarious um, but anyway uh, we placed third which like if you think about it was pretty okay and then we always swear that if we had have won it probably would have been the end of it it probably would have been okay yeah that's that done tick what's what's the next challenge but there was something there and then there was something eating us away that we knew we could possibly get better at this and yeah. um, so the plan was to go home 
find another one and actually train for it <laughs> and see what we could do and of course then COVID hit so that was that because oh. that was the uh, February and then COVID hit in the March okay um, so yeah that's how we Tom slash heard of High Rocks. That's such an interesting story I mean yeah because now it's so widely well like yeah. even just listening to it in German I mean you think about how much everyone talks about or oh, how many laps you do or what do you do this and there's so much conversation about it to just go in and be like okay I don't really yeah. know what's happening but we'll see how it yeah, goes exactly. <laughs> yeah and even my like Duolingo um like <laughs> couldn't save me like I go on these um you know every mi- missions every few months where I'm gonna I'm gonna start training my mind a little bit more and I'll get Duolingo out for a couple of weeks and then nothing but wow. um yeah so that was it and it was but it was enjoyable it was something very different and it was so funny because I was actually training for that should have been in in Hamburg but they moved it to Hanover I'm not sure Mm -hmm. why but at the time I was training for the Hamburg Ironman that was 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 three months later um Um, but it got it got cancelled but the couple that won we got chatting to them afterwards and he also was training for the Hamburg uh, Ironman so it's just it was great um yeah so we did the um we did the online um competition that high rocks put out all through covid and um we both well tom actually qualified for the first elite 15 that happened and I qualified out of that to do the world championships which was the first one back which was in Leipzig and okay. so my first ever high rocks like singly was a pro was in a world championships I'd <laughs> never done it before and I managed to win my age group so that's that's a lovely little story that I love telling because um I just kind of googled what the weights were and stuff um, and then we were sitting having a coffee with some people um, that ha- we just seen them there. They were, we didn't know them. And we'd got to talking about the sleds. And she said, yeah, but you know you're doing pro weights. And I was like, no. And she's like, yeah, yeah, everybody does pro weights at the thing. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, That's so sled. I a, <laughs> yeah, I had a slow panic attack. Um, but you know what? It all went well. And it, to date, it is still my favorite world championships. And uh, afterwards, there was about 40 of us, including like Christian and Mincha and a couple of the other elites. Um, they were still quite heavy regulated. So you couldn't ins- you couldn't have a drink inside at certain times. And we all just sat in this car park having a few cans that someone had bought up from a supermarket. Oh. <laughs> and that was the that was the after party, the first ever world championships after party. <laughs> That's, that's so cool it's actually really cool to hear about like the first one I mean how many athletes were there would um, you say gosh I'm sorry I don't know, no, I, don't know like... I, I think it was it was it, it wasn't a whole lot because they were still actually quite regulated okay. um and and they were even um it wasn't high rocks but although they enforce the rules but Germany Germany has some quite heavy regulated to get in and out and stuff like that so yeah wasn't anything like we're seeing now but there was still a, quite a decent amount of people there and of course then there was a, a few of the original like Tobias and um, Florian and uh, Hunter yeah. were there at that one and so yeah it was really it's a surreal moment to look back on it now we're all sitting in this car park and I mean I don't think anyone including Christian and Mintra maybe they can correct me if I'm wrong but I don't not sure anyone could foresee what has what's blown up to become high rocks of today i know that's what's crazy isn't it just how much it's taken off especially like post covid as well like and how many people you're now seeing at yeah. all of the events is unbelievable for sure oh, no, oh, no. oh. yeah it is yeah it's amazing it is incredible and then so yeah so you you got to the world championships what was it like you just said that you obviously trained a lot together with Tom but then you competed was it really nice when you competed together to do something together because you yeah it is you said lovely. that was one of your aims was to and then you yeah. went separately and did Definitely. your own races to... <laughs> again <laughs> like, scrap that back back in competitive mode <laughs> yeah um I think again it's just you know sometimes I believe these things all just have this natural way of making things happen if, if there had been no covid would there have been a 
um, you know, an at-home competition? Would then mm-hmm. everyone have been at Leipzig? Would have Tom have got into the elite? It's all this butterfly effect. And mm-hmm. we always say it's, it, High Rocks has completely changed our lives, completely changed the direction of our lives in terms of not only our achievements and what we train and what we race, but what we now work at, who we um, connect with and who we network with. I would go as far as to say even our friendship circles, like High Rocks has really pivoted everything for us. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm grateful for it, like, you know. Yeah, and you, and you guys have thrown yourselves into it. So like all kudos to you guys yeah. for going for it, you know, because you get yeah. out what you put in. Um, yeah, and the training thing together, I mean, even if we don't hadn't been racing together at that time, um, obviously we have done lots of mixed doubles together now. Um, but I think as a couple to have that time always together mm. because everyone's just so, so busy now, aren't they? Like everybody mm. and we, I mean, we're up at five we don't go to bed till probably 12 and then in between you've got all the nine to five stuff the kids stuff so at least we know if we're ships passing through the night uh, all the all the time during the day at least we've got them you know two hours a day or whatever it may be whatever's on the cards and then we can keep ourselves like each other accountable too which is another thing you know like it's very very rare that the two of us would be in like a slump or a can't be bothered kind of mood at the same time so there's usually one that would go come on you know this is around the corner or because like we're only human motivation doesn't stay up there 100 percent all the time so that's another good thing we also program for each other um which uh, doesn't cause any fights at all (laughs) (laughs) lies (laughs) there's lots it's all good it's all good (laughs) <laughs> that is cool and you're right it, it's the whole if one of you's feeling a bit better than the other one they can lift them up and that's what the good thing is about having a training partner or a coach or a yeah. club is that accountability or the support as well when you're not feeling great because it isn't you're not always motivated and it is the discipline and I mean yeah. we get it sometimes if like one of us isn't feeling great and then if the other one's like right I'm going out for my run then yeah, same as me I'd be like oh. lose face. <laughs> yeah because otherwise I'd just be jealous and I'd be like yeah. fed up. like I'd be I'd, I'd always yeah. get my, my kit on once somebody else is it so it really does help yeah. so I can see what you mean and yeah. then taking it back to the I'm just really intrigued because I haven't heard of this before but you said about doing the home workouts to mm-hmm. qualify for Leipzig for the thing. what what yeah. was it what did they do during COVID that you okay, had to do so at they home? actually did two um and you could choose between a body weight one for people that had absolutely no equipment because don't forget this was the time you yeah could, that's why I remember what the what you were but like we there was a time where we could only go 5k from our house yeah. this so you could choose from a complete body weight one and then you could choose one with limited equipment but they gave you what the list so okay. i think you needed a rower you needed a war ball and you needed some dumbbells and so the um oh my god it's it's a while ago now Oh, you don't have to say it exactly. No. I just kind of yeah. was intrigued. Yeah, so basically, just to... I'm sh- I think what you had, to- I think the first one, what they did was they released all four workouts and you had four days to complete them. So kind of and like it- a CrossFit Open type thing. You kind like, did the and you workouts. you had to and... film it through um, a wad- wad up. Okay. And okay. you had to like show your name and the time. Oh, yeah. um, another, And then the next one was they didn't release until the night before and then you had when they released it you had 24 hours to do it oh cool yeah and it was really good because you inputted your results yourself and then you could watch like your name going up and down and you're like stop doing it (laughs) (laughs) how many more people (laughs) (laughs) um so that was really good and then what they did was like a normal world championships really they had a podium and uh, like an online podium and they had winners and then the think it was the top five ish went into a head-to-head that was live streamed from their space oh, wow. um and that's where um like luke and marcus and stuff and etc got in so yeah it was it was really interesting and it was very very smart of high rocks 
because yeah, yeah. it could have just died there and then really mm-hmm. when you think about it um, but it kept people going it kept people interested to see what was going on um, and then of course it, it provided the event then for the comeback yeah clever. yeah it's got so people cool. yeah still in it people didn't forget about it they they were there yeah. and then even more excited for when they could actually go to another event yeah yeah so I had my because my Ironman was cancelled Ironman gave us like a voucher to for the race and said you know next time you want to do one um it's here but you you have I think it was three years to use it so I was like okay well I'll I'll put it off to next year and I'll concentrate on this high rocks thing and then it came around and was like okay I'll I'll definitely do it next year I'll put it off to next year and I'll do high rocks for another few weeks I never happened. No, no. <laughs> that was my that was gonna be my other question. Have you done a did you do a Iron Man after? But no, not no, since no. you've got into High Rocks now. And how about no. Tom? Has he just stuck to no. High Rocks? Have you both yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. We haven't even done like any road running or anything really. Like it's Crazy. it's cool. completely insane, really. Um but yeah, we completely, I can actually, from my here, I can see my road and my time trial bike. And I think there's about 10 inches of dust sitting on top of him. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy though, isn't it? When you get the bug and it's like. Yeah, Tom's like, are you going to sell them bikes anytime soon? I'm like, no, because I may want to Maybe. go back. Uh, you know, yeah. it's like your wheels alone are worth more than the car down there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. That, that can't do it. <laughs> you just you still need to have the option you want to have the option if you yeah want to. exactly yeah exactly so uh, but you, I mean you know what it takes to train for high rocks it's intense it's because you're you're juggling running and your eight stations and all you know so it's time available and the whole idea of us moving away from Ironman was to make more time available and I do think that's the beauty of high rocks you can get some really hard tough training in in an hour you know yeah you don't need five hour cycles at the weekend yeah. you don't need you know your 30k runs so that's you can I be can't clever see, with the training. yeah I can't see me going back to it anytime soon but and your your gym setup doing it is it is it in in your house is it in your back garden like is it close yeah it's just literally in in my back garden yeah so you like that's perfect for like with your kids and yeah being able to train Um, yeah yeah. we we kind of started that in around probably just before covid time um and it was got like this treadmill in and in and a weight rack maybe that might have been the the just of it and then we just added on and added on and to be honest with you it is the one thing I'd say that Tom and I never ever like flinch about buying something for or because the amount of use it gets from the whole family and yeah. they don't know it but like unbeknownst to them they're spending time with us when they don't yeah. even realize it like it's a sneaky yeah. way of like you know my my oldest son is 22 going on 23 like as if I could get him to spend an hour with me but you know he goes down to the gym and I'm like oh I was going to come down there in 10 minutes you know (laughs) so yeah I get to get to do that so it's great and then kids always have their friends over in it oh that's so cool it's a real hub you know um Josh and his mates they usually do like a big weight session get on a you know a chest and arms pump yeah yeah (laughs) and then um they go out for a beer and, and negate it all but that's you know <laughs> but they up. look good in their t-shirts yeah, they when they good. go out for their beer so. Yeah, so the gym is brilliant it's really and it's got everything we need and you know it's it's definitely the hub of the house now yeah, that's so cool so mm. where everybody else is the, the kitchen <laughs> yeah in the Hogan <laughs> household it's the gym <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, yeah. And, uh, I bet people are worried to come around in case you put them on a treadmill aren't they <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny we had like friends coming out of the woodwork during COVID because you know um, oh, yeah. obviously the gyms were closed and yeah stuff. so yeah we were like oh hi so we at one stage we had to like make a little rotor because like Tom's parents were coming to, <laughs> to get on the bike and stuff you know and my cousin and my sister and like yeah we had a little little rotor going but it's amazing oh, yeah that. yeah that is brilliant and then so your coaching business then did you coach did you coach like I like endurance before you did high rocks was that is that yes yeah, so has we that come always, because um, of high rocks? we we had like a few like people that we um trained for uh, road running mainly a couple of triathletes but 
coaching for triathlon is extremely detailed um you know so more so for road running and then um it was just a natural progression and then our second oldest son when he was 16 he got offered a soccer scholarship in london and Mm -hmm. we didn't really want him going on his own so we decided to get our own flat and basically tag team out of there and so i would do maybe monday to friday tom would come with the other kids for a few days then he'd go back, I'd do another week and then maybe I'd go home and his nanny would come and stuff like this. Um, mm-hmm. But obviously when I was there, I had so much more time on my hands because I wasn't full time mammy here. You know, I was being yeah. mammy to Jay, who was out playing soccer and training. Mm-hmm. So um, I decided that I wanted to kind of see if I could grow it. And um I did. <laughs> I yeah, read you it did rapidly. Yeah. Um, success. <laughs> yes, success. Yes. And I was um, like, oh no, I don't have this much time. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse. But uh, yeah, so um, that, and then that's what happened. Um, so our actual, not many people know actually, it does come as a surprise to some people, but our main kind of bread and butter is we have a large printing company. Um, okay. with staff and machines and all the rest of it. Um, so it was last year that um no probably a little bit longer probably a year and a half now we realized that i just couldn't do it alone like it was progressing that much so um we made some changes down there and then tom was kind of working at home one day a week purely to help me with coaching and then eight months ago it was like oh okay now you need to be here two days so then it's two days and um to be honest with you now we're looking at him being full-time coaching with me and because it's that's what it that's what it needs at the moment which is amazing I'm very grateful I have the best clients we have a such a good community and but we had to cap it a couple of weeks ago Mm -hmm. and I don't want to do that like I, I I love having new people on board um but we just we know what we need to do it's just going to be a hard couple of months getting to that stage so that's where we're at at the moment um but yeah the team Hogan is it's great that's oh amazing. yeah it's amazing well we see it everywhere popping up and it, it is it's so so good to see you coaching and helping so many people yeah I think it's a way of because I suppose we feel we do feel like our time amongst racing is coming to an end. Um, I mean, you can argue you you can stay in age group, and absolutely you can. Um, our bodies are quite broke up at the moment, and for have been for a while. And I think like people say, oh well, such and such is forty, and such and such is still in the elite yeah. and is forty like it doesn't work that way it's not an age it's how long and how much you have put your body through Mm. and I like as I said like we were 23 24 when we started and we have done like years of 30 hour weeks of Mm. training on top of working for children business training family like which everyone is that's yeah but but us it's probably time now to start winding it down because um we feel where we can stay in high rocks and stay involved is through our clients and our coaching yeah and you have to do what works for you. everyone's different for you guys for your family for your bodies yeah. for your happiness and what you have the energy to give and yeah like it doesn't always have to be I guess in your racing you can give all of that energy yeah. to your clients yes yeah. I mean like, in an ideal world if like if I could magic it a hundred percent I would stay around racing if if I wasn't like sore every day if I didn't have a new thing cropping up every day and um, I haven't ran since Vienna now and the torment that goes along with an injury I'm sure no. you both know like every day you think it's going to be better and every day it's not and you try this you try that you try this person and you try this injection and your my whole circle and my whole bubble is high rocks whether Mm -hmm. it's friends or social media and it can be all consuming to see everybody 
smashing their training and doing this and doing this and it's great for you but it can be a hard pill to swallow when you're not being able to do it um so I think maybe if we come away from the racing side a little bit take the pressure off having to train um you know and as I said be in high rocks through that and the other many avenues we've got going on at the moment I think it will be good oh yeah absolutely I mean we relate like I've had an injury and wasn't able to run for yeah three four months but then Faye goes out on a run and feels guilty because I can't go but I don't want her not to go because that's not good for her and or her like mental health and fitness so it's hard to like get that balance And then when you're surrounded by everyone else who's also training or, you know, we're coaching people to go and smash goals. It's like, it's that love hate relationship Mm -hmm. of like, yeah, being in that, in an amazing bubble, but yeah, like always not being able to Mm -hmm. do what you, what you can at that time, but fingers crossed that it goes, goes on the up soon. Yeah, exactly. Stay for sure. (laughs) And then looking forward, um, in high rocks right now for anyone that's like training to do their first high rocks or anybody that's been involved for a while and maybe their training is just like hit a bit of a plateau do you have any like tips or tricks especially from like the endurance background and your coaching like maybe three 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 tips or three yeah, like I priorities suppose... you would put into training for people tom and i are very much all about being quality over quantity um and i think it's where a lot of people maybe slip up. They just pile on more, 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 but more junk mileage, as we call it. Um, I mean, in a in in a nutshell, even the clients I have, they're they're a nightmare. They're an absolute nightmare in terms of like rest and a day off, and you probably have it as well. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I could tell some of them they need to do their burpee broad jumps on a 10 foot ceiling and they would do it. But then I say, okay, next week's a D-log. Why? <laughs> do I really need to do that? Can I, yeah, can I just add this in? So I'm a big believer in, especially if you are time crunched, if you've got the pressures of work, business, family, like you should be really being smart. It's about what can you get like for bang for your book? Like, do you really need to do a 15K zone to run? Or are you better doing a compromised run with some heavy sleds for 50 minutes? Like, these are the kind of things that I think a lot of people miss. Rest and deload is another one. Like, Team Hogan worked to four weeks of work, one week deload, four weeks of work, one week deload. Um, Vital vital for the body vital to like up for the next block vital to see if the things are working is the other thing like um so they're all little little tips i think that people could take on board maybe yeah and then and then i guess that ties into like you've just we've just been talking about like injury prevention as well like people that don't take the deload or you know if you overtrain during the week or with high yeah, rocks exactly. i guess overtraining in high intensity like sessions yeah, you see people doing high intensity session after high intensity session with no recovery or no steadier sessions to yeah and the thing is them kind of results are deceiving because you'll get you will probably get some good results off of that for a very short period of time and then what happens is the body rebels or you get injured or whatever it may be and then what do you think the answer is well then I've got to do more of it like you know maybe I'm not training hard enough and so you know, it is, it's about being smart with your time. Um, and a big thing as well it is what Tom and I call, like, it's why we program for each other the vast majority of the time is to stop the cherry picking. Like, you know, um, like you I love burpees. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, burpee, burpee, burpee. And he's like, you going to do any skiing this week? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are, no. what's, what's that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like it. <laughs> giving him the little puppy eyes. Or yeah. So that's another thing, I suppose, if you don't have a coach to really break down your week and break down the hierarchs and just make sure you're training over all stations and that the, the things that you're weaker at 
or you don't like like it's probably the time to kind of do more of them you know Hmm. yeah totally and then what about like for the off season you know a lot of people might be coming up to um, world champs or just have competed at world champs and then do you have any suggestions for kind of what what they should maybe do straight after or what their training yeah. should look like for the off season? I suppose it, it very is, um, it's, sorry, it's very personal to each individual. Like with me, with myself and my clients, what I tend to do is tend to look at the results, look at the season on of a whole and really like label what's positive, what's weak, what has improved, what hasn't, and then formulate your off season from them. So if somebody has come to me and she has a um, like a CrossFit background, she's strong as like, you know, her lifts have just gone up and up and this and that. Well, she ain't going to like it, but like now is the time for her to work on her engine. Like now is yeah. the time for her to work on her like endurance side, her cardio side, get some base miles in, you know, bring it back get rid of the speed work you know things like that and vice versa like if someone's been making improvement improvement in their running um and that's a big one actually people get addicted to seeing their run and getting faster um i don't think it's a a shock to anybody my clients do treadmill tuesday um it's not essential they do it on a treadmill however it's like frowned upon if they don't (laughs) (laughs) we judge them anyway and uh, we've got a little uh, we've got a facebook community group only for clients and they love it they've put in what they've done and what they haven't and you know like oh, base made and then on the end of their deload our test is actually a 5k 80 percent of the time sometimes it's something different if they're very doing something very specific for high rocks like targeting a, a world champs or targeting uh, europeans or something maybe but if they're far K's are going down and down and down they just love it they just want to keep running and running and running regardless of like what's happening and I have to kind of consciously bring them back and say you know remember the goal is actually high rocks and (laughs) and so their off season will be very different it will be maybe we'll um, lose a a work uh, like a compromise session and we'll add a gym session so we're working more on strength so it's very different however what I will say for everybody is they really should taper it back. It's like High Rocks has changed so, so much in the last few years. Like essentially there is no off season. Like you yeah. could, if you, if you wanted to, and Go you, over had, to Australia. you could fly it across yeah. the world and do a High Rocks every weekend, yeah. um, which, you know, is amazing, but it has its downfalls because people just want to constantly keep racing. Mm. And I'm like, it's a long season. And especially if you are targeting a world championships next year, like you have to take this off season block, then we'll move into pre-season and then we'll move into season. Um, So yeah. Yeah. I think it's like, yeah, like you said, some people can jump from race to race and you do see a lot like people are like, Oh, there's a race this weekend. Yeah. I've just got a last minute ticket. I'm heading out. And yeah Yeah, people are racing like four or five times in like a couple of months. And it's, I don't know, to put out that effort, recover, and, and then come back again and like the, you can make your yeah yeah your... To, to me it's just you can't string a training block together then. no like no. improvement is main is made when i i see i see it all the time there is a direct correlation with people that just like follow the plan and keep to the training cycle to the people that go oh i just seen this and i'm just jumping in or i I want to do this one now and okay i'm like okay well all you've done you you're not going to see an improvement you they raced they took a week as kind of recovery so it was only like a half training week then they did one full week and now they want to deload because they're racing again Mm. like where's the training where's the adaptation where's where have you strung the training together to see an improvement you know? Yeah, you you spend more time deloading and tapering for the next race and recovering, Absolutely. and than you do actually putting in a in a solid block of yeah. So so for someone listening now, then if they were looking for their 2024, 2025 season, how how many races would you say, or like would you say like how long between races? Like obviously they need the periodization in their training mm. to be able to peak and yeah. 
like we try and say at least six weeks that you so that you can get one full block of either side of like deloading and recovering um but ideally i mean personally like four races is enough Mm. like you know i mean the other end of it is you could do it differently you could do some doubles for fun or you know this it's not a relay yeah exactly like stuff that you could train through and it, and that being said that's if you are um you know doing high rocks for that particular reason like i've got some clients that just don't care they don't care yeah. what time they do what results they get where position they are and they're happy just to go from one race to the next because they love high rocks fair enough yeah. it's just it's different if you're just trying to constantly improve yeah and I think that's really like vital like information for people even if they're just thinking about next year or they're maybe looking at their results this year thinking why have I not improved on my like maybe their PB was back last year and they're wondering why they haven't improved this year maybe they've just over egged yeah. the amount of races they think they can do yeah and the courses and stuff make a huge difference now like the courses are so different that sometimes these PBs they're not really pbs like you haven't gone three and a half minutes faster (laughs) you've just you've gone a little bit faster and then you've been lucky enough to get this fast course and everything's gone right and it's great that's great to say you've got this time and you did but then what happens is people constantly refer back to it and as a coach that's really hard um not scotland just gone glasgow the one before like i had like a hundred percent people got a PB there and I had to constantly remind them that you know this does not necessarily reflect your finishing time because mm-hmm. three months later when they go to the next race they're like oh I've got two minutes slower you haven't like you know and they all these things need to be taken into consideration really yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah. And it's, I guess it's like, if you put it into like comparison terms, like doing a marathon and running a flat, fast marathon like Valencia and then going and running Boston where it's got a couple of hills and just because it's 26 miles, it doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you yeah. went slower in Boston. It just means it was a, it was a different course. So you're never yeah. going to get the same. You have to compare like for like rather than. That's it. That's it. Yeah, it's apples sure. and oranges. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then what about touching just a little bit on mental strength? I mean, you've got some mental strength because you've done 40 kilometers on a treadmill, which is like <laughs> my worst nightmare. So do you do you have any like tips or do you train mental strength or do you talk about it at all with your clients? Uh, your so I suppose I've always said, actually, I am um, not the most talented person out there. I'm really not um I'm a very mediocre athlete in terms of natural talent and genetics um but I am able to really really go to a dark place that has always been um one of my major strengths I don't need I don't need a race environment I don't need company I don't I can actually go down there to my gym and you know put myself in such a hurt locker that I'm on the floor for 10 minutes um and in a race I can do the same I can really dig deep so I think that that's been responsible for a lot of my results I I don't know how much you can train that I'm not sure Mm -hmm. um I think to a certain degree you either have it or you don't um you, you know I, I I even see it with I've got four kids and they say you never have one, never have one the same and that's the truth like they're all very different talented in different ways um but I do see two of the four of them that will just you know ah, what will be will be you know if we win we win kind of thing mm. and then I've got two that will just die on the line for anything <laughs> like you know um uh, a little bit like me and they got that from you <laughs> yeah just like you know it's it's in you it's in you to to go through that kind of hurt and that go through the other side and so but I suppose people could try and work on it a little bit maybe do like as I said lots more of the stuff they don't like and um, mm-hmm. we do it with clients actually they'll tell you every, randomly every four or five weeks our clients will get dished something absurd um like 
the men got a thousand calorie roll there the other day or the other week, a couple of them. A thousand um, calorie. A thousand calorie. And they could decide how they wanted to do it. They could roll right through. They could do it EMOM style. But the whole idea was they didn't get off the roll until a thousand calories. Now, is that necessarily going to make them a better roller? No. Is it going to make them better for high rocks? No. But like just these mental battles. And um, there was one the other day where it had 450 war balls in it. Um, and, you know, it's not just about what they're getting physically. Um, so all our programs are tailor-made one-on-one um, in terms of pacing and stuff. We don't do like templates. However, we're all training for the same race. So there are workouts that I will dish out to some of us, but they'll be slightly different. So it'll be the exact workout in terms of like run to war ball. However, what your run pace is different to what mine is. You, I, I could be doing it with the open. You could be doing it with the pro, etc. But then they love it because they all jump in on the yeah. the community page. And someone was like, "I haven't got that yet. I've got FOMO, Dina. I want this next week." You know, <laughs> stuff like this. And then you're like, "You've all sat and moaned about how crazy it is, but now the ones that didn't get it want yeah. it." It's, it's yeah. Hilarious. So yeah, so like things like that. Just every now and again, just and I always say to them like you can refer back to this on race day, you know, mm. like, okay, I'm feeling like rubbish right now. I'm coming out of the last run. I know I've got a hundred war balls. Oh, but wait, remember that time I did 450 war balls? Like, yeah. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, It's only a hundred or it's only 75. I've done 450. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. Mentally. Yeah. Just random stuff that like, they're just like, is this a typo? <laughs> they all <laughs> said, there's a running joke in, in team Hogan because I'm so, so bad at um, like typos and spelling and stuff. Like it's, it's, we call it Dina language. It's that bad. Like, you know? <laughs> and I, a couple of weeks ago, there was a couple, I sent out a message because we had a few new people start and I was like, you know, if a pace or if a round seems like completely insane, maybe just double check with me. Um, because Zara got, you know, Zara, she got a workout and it should have been one round of this crazy workout. And I had put in three. Oh, <laughs> the girl was at the track for about three hours. And she didn't, she just did it. Just I did mean, it. kudos she to Zara. <laughs> Um, so I'm like, yeah, so, and I'll be programming and I'll be looking back on the week to see, you know, checking what they've done, check their pace. And I'll be like, Jesus, how did they understand that one? I can't even understand <laughs> what I've run. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, a, there's a bit of gas, a bit of banter and stuff going on with Team Hogan. It's lovely. That is oh, so nice. It. And it's like the community thing that helps. And I think sometimes, like you said about the, the big workouts or the challenging workouts, sometimes people don't want them, but they also kind of do. And yeah. if everybody else is doing them, people are like, oh, like, exactly. I don't want to miss out. It's quite, it's a really weird, like, psychological thing, isn't it? That isn't you're it? like, it's funny, yeah. yeah. And Tom and I test every single workout we program. Yeah, so, so not, you've seen that. Yeah, not one session is done if we haven't done it. And and sometimes, like, we'll go, we'll do one and we'll be, like, carved on the floor and we'll be like, okay, no. <laughs> not <laughs> Too <much>. not, not <laughs> Too far. And I had just give that one to Zara. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I picked her up the other week, and I, I was, it's, a, it's a while ago now. And I was like, okay, this one might not make the cut. Like, and I swear to God, about twenty of them messaged me, and they were like, "Please, can I have it? Please, can I have it anyway?" No way. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. I love it. It's yeah, nice everyone... to see people excited about training and stuff as well. And I think that's what's been so nice about High Rocks. It's got that like. I've often like, re like referred to it or compared it to a marathon where it's got the, you know, your elites, your club runners and um your community, like everybody else that's coming to give it a go. And it's Absolutely. just got the whole range and it's created this amazing community where everybody wants to get involved and everyone from elite to, you know, you're, you're just weekend runner can enjoy an event together. And it's, it's such sure. a special thing. So mm -hmm. I'm really interested in stuff. You've seen it grow from the beginning and you just said like, it's crazy where it is. And maybe they didn't, you know, the guys that created yeah. High Rocks didn't expect it to ever be this big. Where do you think it's going to go? What, what's your, like, have you got any thoughts? Do you think it's going to be like CrossFit, like bigger than CrossFit? Do you think we're going to see, like, what, what do you think we're going to see? Do you I really don't know. I can actually see the Olympics, you know? Yeah. yeah. Who, we've just done a podcast actually with um, Rich, Rich Kirby, Kirby and he mentioned Olympic sport. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I, you got to stay a little, 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 little
yeah yeah Hogan think... juniors <laughs> the hogan th- hogan junior <laughs> squad <laughs> <laughs> i think with the kids coming i mean we've seen it with triathlon actually we were we were in that generation of triathlon where anyone that did triathlon they were a runner that decided to take up triathlon there were cyclists that decided to take up triathlon and then all of a sudden people like the brownleys came along murray came along and they were from a generation where their sport was triathlon from the time Mm -hmm. they were six or seven they were swim bike and running for a career in triathlon Mm -hmm. and that's when like the turning point happens and i can see that happening with high rocks there'll be a whole generation coming along where oh, what do you do at the weekends? High rocks, you know? Oh, do you play soccer? Do you play football? I do high rocks. So I can see that happening. And I think then that will be a pivotal point in in where high rocks goes from there then. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's exciting. It's just gonna, it's gonna go bigger than it. I mean, how much it's grown in the last few years is crazy. So it's definitely got the scope to keep going and keep going. Mm. And then I was going to ask about like coaching Zara and Elite 15 athletes, like, do you find it like I mean it's not hugely different with it being a grid format but do you find that that comes into a lot of the training because it is like up and down up and down up and down yeah. as opposed to to be honest the grid format and stuff it's not a major difference there's only one or two stations that are changed um and the the stations like things like farmers carry and burpees that you know it, it's not a huge difference the grid style format always is just more whether the athlete can handle it mentally and mm-hmm. um, you know they're coming back to the same spot they've got eyes on all on them for the entire race and um, you are toe to toe with your person next to you near enough for the entire race um so it's more whether they can handle the different race format themselves um in terms of zara absolutely like yeah she's cool as a cucumber and rightly so she has done the work she is more than ready so um it's funny though because obviously i'm training for the country relay now and to obviously on the same um, legs uh, pardon (laughs) Are you on the is same that, legs? She keeps asking us and we're like, what are you doing? Are you? You? <laughs> oh, competition. <laughs> so, um, but she, obviously Tom and I have done grid style format from being in the elite 15. Um, but the two, two others on the team haven't. So um, I'm trying to like give them a few tips and yeah. talk to them about how it will be. And it will be a big, a big, big change for Barry and Alvini. So uh, yeah, just have to make sure they're prepared for it. And it's more about, as I said, the pressure. Like yeah. um, I took a lot into consideration when she was in the team. Um, and Barry, for, for instance, that man, like, he will have no problem lining up against anybody, Hunter, mm-hmm. Alex, anybody, because, and not because, you know, he, he he's, you know, thinks he's something. It's because he's just so used to that highly, highly competitive nature. You know, oh, yeah. he's he's raced for his country for 15 years. He understands yeah. what it takes. He doesn't let it phase him. And that's that's a big thing, I think, I think you know, in, in them grid style stuff. And, and yeah, I, I think, think maybe yeah. for, for this relay as well, because it's a big thing. They're creating this big hype around the relays. Everyone's going to tune they in because sure it's the are, first yeah. time they've done it. So you need to make sure that anyone, I mean, it's a really interesting point to raise especially when em raised about the mental fortitude i guess to make sure that Mm. someone isn't just physically fit but that they can cope with the pressure that's going to be on them when they're racing for their country on that on that day and then yeah sorry no i was gonna say and you don't know who you are going toe-to-toe with because you don't know what the other team's doing no one's advertising it are they yeah (laughs) it's a bit like well who is actually going to be next to me on that start line yeah exactly you can um um, sorry, slime. No, you're right. Man, can I play with slime? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't know to ask about that one. She's taking full advantage of me. Not yeah, to say, oh, she can't away. say yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so yeah, no one knows anything, and everyone's keeping their cards close to their chest. And because I suppose ultimately you're putting these dream teams together, if you want to call them, and 
you're looking for every possible edge going like yeah, you know the, yeah. it'll come down to like little percent like I know with us like we're under no illusion I think we're definitely underdogs and that's fine and um, but we will make sure our tactics are on board we'll make sure our changeovers are smooth we'll make sure our standards are on point you know all them little things will add up yeah yeah 100 percent. and everyone loves an underdog so I don't think you're gonna you know yeah. you'll have the crowd yeah. on your side so that's the <laughs> that's the thing isn't it? and then I was gonna say em, em raised about Zara and obviously we did a podcast with Zara and she she talked about being coached by you guys and mm-hmm. how did you feel about those last chance qualifiers like as coaches watching that because that was a storming storming yeah. performance it was incredible it was, it was amazing and um I suppose for us like we can say it easily now but genuinely from the heart we never ever seen another outcome we didn't we yeah. absolutely knew what the outcome was going to be and um, because we seen the stats like we were seeing the stats every week coming in from what she was doing and I remember we were actually training in the gym when that race was going on and we were watching it live on a on the thing and um, you know it was it was amazing it was really good and then she actually crossed the line and about a minute later or whatever it was, two or three minutes later, she FaceTimed us very quickly oh, just to say, yeah. you know, thank you. And I, I got really emotional. <laughs> I was like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, like a little kid making it or something. Yeah. I was like so happy. Because um, it was such oh, a good performance. It, was... it wasn't just a, like, she literally just stopped. I mean, the lunges, I was like, bloody hell. <laughs> like, yeah. Your, your heart rate in the gym, you must have been running faster or burping faster or whatever watching it. Like, <laughs> yeah, because exactly. ah! yeah, at one point I was on the rower and Tom was on the bike gerg and he had it on there. And I was like, what? What's, what's happening? Because <laughs> all I could do was go, go, do that, do that. And I was like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, it was oh, great. No. She's one to watch for sure. Absolutely, Absolutely. amazing athlete. Yeah. Um, right, Faith, do you have anything else to add? Or I feel like we could talk for hours, no. but... Um, no, we- Shall we go on to, we've got eight questions for you um, as our little cheeky insights, if that's okay. Okay, fire away. Um, first one being, what shoes do you wear to race high rocks? I wear the Puma Nitro Elites. I love them. Okay, yeah. perfect. Easy, Good easy. Good answer. Yeah. yeah. What venue's your favourite high rocks venue to race? Oh, that's hard because my favourite race, as I said, was Leipzig. But I, my favourite venue of all time so far is Berlin. That was amazing. Oh, oh yeah. The one at Temple. Out- yeah, yes. outside. Oh, yeah. We were gutted. We did have FOMO for that race. I know. Yeah. It's the only race I've come out of and I've said, do you know the way, like, we're lucky enough, like, we can get tickets, but do you know, you know the way they say, like, they sell out and stuff? Like yeah. I said, that would be one that I would sit waiting for it to open to okay. get a place for, like, because um, it was truly amazing. Yeah. Now, now everyone's going to be sitting waiting for it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, you just it. damn yeah. rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I will be planning my race season around that race. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Next is what's your favorite high rock station and why? Um, does running count? <laughs> no, count? running doesn't count. count. <laughs> okay. um, I'm probably gonna. Go... And it's not the ski erg, is it? No, we know that. Ski erg. Um, it's funny because I always say I'm not like the first time I did a women's doubles, I was going through, we were going through the stuff with my, with the partner. And I was like, well, you know, Kate's a bit of a better skier than me. So she'll blah, blah. And then I was like, she's actually a bit of a better role than me. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, is there anything I'm actually good at? <laughs> in terms of, it, again, it's not, not one station that I really perform yeah. excellent on. It's more like, but I suppose if I had to pick a station, it would be the Burford Broad Jumps okay Oosh, nice but it's because you like to go in a hole and suffer that's that's yeah. why it's the therapies um if you could do a doubles high rocks which you have obviously done with anyone in yeah. the world who would it be oh outside of tom no you can still choose tom oh i'll still choose and then get some brownie points for some lululemon clothes or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love it um, i do i do enjoy racing with him honestly i'm like have you heard of the term like passenger princess you know when you're in the car and you can just switch off and play with the radio and stuff. that's me yeah. when i'm racing with tom and doubles i just like literally i'm like uh, uh, just I stick just with bump, him on the runs and yeah like, his feet and he does his like exactly that's it that's my one job just to stay beside him <laughs> <laughs> so good 
Um, next one is, do you fuel for high rocks? And if so, what fuel do you use and when do you take it? Um, I really believe for high rocks, you don't have to get too intentional with changing anything or adding things or having more. I'm pretty good on nutrition, to be honest with you. Um, I'm like everything. I have days where, you know, oh, that scone looks nice and I have it. But on a whole, I'm quite good. Um, I supplement a lot with ESM products and I just keep everything the same. I really, I just, the only thing I probably make sure I do, which I do tell clients is I don't leave anything to chance on like, if I'm going like to Germany or somewhere for a race, I'll take like the porridge pots and stuff like that yeah. with me. I'll go to make sure I go to the shop the day before. So nothing changes too much, but I make sure I have what I need. Yeah. And do, do you feel during the race or? No, I just, no, I just, I no. Oh, we don't even really like, um, you know, even take on water too much because yeah. I'm really like conscious, like of, of it all week. I'll make sure that I'm getting yeah. all my um, electrolytes in and my salts in and my water from all from race week. And then when it comes to race day, you don't have this thing of, oh my God, I need to drink more water, more water. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah. you know, I'm 42, I've had four kids, like, I don't want to leave anything to chance in terms of like <laughs> bladder and going to the loo. So personally, it's not for everyone. And like, obviously always practice everything you do. But like, I kind of stopped drinking about three hours before my race. Um, oh, wow. Like if I'm thirsty, I'll have like just a sip just because I'm thirsty. Yeah. But in terms of hydrating, it's done. It's done long before yeah, it's race too day. Late. Yeah, yeah. yeah not going to make a difference then no, i mean it's... you're used to running for 80k so an hour is nothing <laughs> <laughs> exactly easy work <laughs> um okay what's your favorite type of training session for high rocks um well usually i'd say like anything with like a compromised running because that's really where i am um, excel is being able to hit the stations hard off of running and um, lately I've, I haven't really been doing as much running so um, I've really got into kind of some some rowing I'm rowing a lot more than I ever did I think I'm rowing more like a week than I probably did in a month um, previous to this wow. six months yeah I'm not even yeah. joking <laughs> um, so yeah any kind of wad style like that but then I do love just standalone gym sessions too like I love going down doing some squats and stuff so you know just that that hour to yourself or with your training partner just away from kind of everyday life is just it's nice isn't it it's nice to have it and yeah refocus and get some get some time away from the the normality the grind yeah yeah, yeah for sure join the family <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah catch up see the kids, <laughs> see the kids. <laughs> <laughs> um next up is why should someone sign up for their first high rocks oh i think everyone should try it like you know um it's so accessible it's so much fun the community overall is amazing um so you will definitely um you know have a good time again like there is people out there like i mean i i literally had a client train with me for six months do the high rocks and says never do one again i never has like i yeah, yeah so yeah. like i mean i suppose it's like anything you have people that try and do a marathon and only ever do one one like, yeah i think it's a lot less in high rocks but um i think everyone should at least try it don't be intimidated by the you know the elite not chest bearing six packing because <laughs> yeah. uh you know they're a small <laughs> minority of people aren't they yeah and then there's there's F for everyone else and us and then yeah so i think it's good it's it's a great thing to try and, and i say to people like don't even have to do it as a solo in the beginning grab mm, a friend yeah. make them join in the horrificness of it and go yeah. from there share the pain yeah. yeah the pain misery loves company <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly is is there anyone that you would like to see on our podcast for us to get some more information from or a type of person in high rocks doesn't have to be a specific mm. person i suppose like for me i just love the more of the everyday people yeah. Do you know the people that are just getting it done they happen to get up at five then they're bringing their kids to school then they're going to work then they're coming back and like I've got some clients that are absolutely amazing they're like juggling everything some of them are nurses they're doing shift work they're then 
you know, going with five hours sleep so that they can get that running before they go back again. So I love the everyday people more so than, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think like the elite 15 people are amazing in their own right, but you know, the vast majority of them are now professional athletes, maybe with less responsibility than your age groupers juggling them maybe a little bit less. Um, so I think the people that need recognition or not recognition, but the people that I am interested in and I get motivated people are people that are more in, in my situation, I suppose. Yeah, relatable yeah. people that find yeah. the time and still push get their some, limits. Get yeah. some yummy mummies yeah. on. And let's yeah. see yeah. how. No, maybe I can get some tips. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. I don't I think you need tips. Sleep, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> get a camper van. I think most mums and mums and dads might be like finding a camper van to get away for the summer, might they? Yeah, no, why not? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Maybe I can force mine to come back again with me. I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Oh man, Dana, thank you so much. It's been no, like welcome. incredible, incredible to chat to you. Um, for anyone, I know you said you put a bit of a cap on training, but obviously you're going to look at stuff going forward. For yeah. anybody that is obviously interested in tapping into you and your you and Tom's expertise, or just to follow your journey in Team Island and everything yeah. that you guys are doing, where where would everyone find you? Uh, you can find my Instagram at Dina Hogan, um, and then Tom's is Hogan Tom, but he literally just reposts whatever I post, so. <laughs> Might as well just follow the source. That's the extent of his social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tag him and then he'll press post. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you can get uh, you can get either one of us there and um, with the website, teamhogan.com. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's where you'll find us all. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Have you got anything else to add, Dana, or anything no, you want to say? Really. Or you're... We're just we're hard at it. We're busy, busy training for this relay, and we've got a great team. I'm super excited. We've been lucky enough to be sponsored by um, an Irish company called Ram. I don't know if you know the sports equipment they make the Ram oh, Spedeca. Like... Um, yeah. yeah. So we've got them on board, and they're they're really behind us. So we're getting lots of training in, and um, yeah, I'm just head down now. We've got. Is it two weeks to world? Is that? I know it's not long, yeah. is it? Yeah, not long at all. I know. I, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait for this after party. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a bit more than sitting in a in a car park yeah, with a few cans, isn't it? This I might time, bring a few tinnies anyway, just yeah, for like yeah. and a deck chair. <laughs> all time's yeah. sake. For nostalgic reasons. I'll yeah. sit there on my own. I can maybe I can rope Christian into just coming and having a can yeah. of beer with me. Have a nice chilled one, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it'd be great. I'm looking forward to it. Exactly. Oh, good luck. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, Thanks, absolutely. Girls. Thank you so much. And if you want to um, share this episode, we would appreciate it. Um, get everyone excited about High Rocks and take some training tips from uh, Dana as, as we move forwards. Um, follow the show if you don't follow it already. Um, and you can find us at Radchicks on Instagram. And we will see you on the next episode. <laughs>